Over the years, demand for rice has been growing owing to increased demand for alternative carbohydrates and progressive change in eating habits. In 2019, Kenya imported rice worth 25 billion shillings. The annual rice consumption is increasing at a rate of 12% compared to 4% for wheat and 1% for maize, which is the main staple food. Previously regarded as an orphan crop, the government declared rice an important crop to supplement maize and in 2008 launched the Kenyan National Rice Development Strategy to double rice production in the country. As the demand for rice increases, farmers are becoming more aware of the environment. Farmers like Dan from West Kano Irrigation Scheme in Western Kenya and Gare from Moya Irrigation Scheme in Eastern Kenya have been growing rice for decades. Initially, my father is the one who was uh, uh, holding these farms. After he has, died, he has died, I'm the one who took over from him. I have four acre of farm, of farm and I'm doing rice. When uh, this uh, rice, this farm was virgin, the production of rice was, the yield was very high. And uh, we, uh, one acre was, was producing almost uh, 60 to 70 bags. But nowadays, the, it, it goes down. I've been a rice farmer for quite a long time. I inherited these farms from uh, my father, who was uh, the original roti. And uh, I've grown here since uh, I was young, and I've been doing this uh, together with my father. Then I took over. Uh, I've done it for several years. We plant rice around August. We harvest uh, uh, late November and December. Then after that, uh, we do what we call ratoon. Ratoon is uh, when uh, when we cut uh, the rice, another crop sprouts, and uh, we treat it just like a, a normal crop and then it grows, we harvest. Then after that, our farms remain idle for quite some time before we embark on the next uh, cropping season. These farmers are just a sneak peek into what other rice farmers have been practicing for many years. Globally, rice is known to be a key contributor to greenhouse gas emissions and climate change owing to the large volumes of fertilizers and water that rice requires. By promoting water and nutrient use efficiency, the concept plays a critical role in the reduction of these gases towards helping combat effects of climate change. The rice sector is one of the largest uh, or the, the, the fastest growing uh, agricultural subsectors in, uh, in Kenya and actually across the world because in terms of uh, uh, consumption, in terms of cereals, actually it's uh, almost now overtaking maize uh, here in Kenya with an annual growth rate of about uh, slightly over 12% per annum, which is uh, way beyond uh, the, the consumption growth rate for both the wheat, uh, maize, uh, and other cereals. So you can imagine how serious this particular commodity is because even of the uh, import, import bill on, uh, on, on rice, particularly here in Kenya, we are the largest importers of rice in East Africa, uh, and therefore, uh, the importance of rice uh, subsector cannot be cannot be again said, and uh, for that reason, uh, you can imagine there is a lot of there are a lot of efforts geared towards uh, rice production, uh, and sometimes uh, we may risk doing rice intensification at the expense of the environment, uh, and of course you can imagine the kind of uh, the amount of pressure uh, rice production puts on uh, on the environment, and of course. Uh, and its effect on, on climate because of uh, the, the, the greenhouse gases that uh, are produced within the, the rice production fields, uh, particularly methane and other greenhouse gases. It is on this backdrop that Kilimo Trust has embarked on a journey to support the two rice growing regions in Kenya, that is eastern and western regions, for cross-learning opportunities to introduce regenerative agriculture through sustainable rice cultivation, rotational cropping with leguminous crops and management of crop waste streams. The project is funded by a care foundation and seeks to foster public and private partnerships along this value chain. The ultimate goal is to promote the use of innovative technologies and generate evidence of developed and tested business models for scaling up as it also boosts farmers' production capacities. We came up with this uh, particular uh, project called uh, uh, Reduce, Reuse, uh, Recycle, Rise Initiative 
funded by the IKEA Foundation of the Netherlands and it's geared towards ensuring that uh, there is uh, increased adoption of sustainable rice production practices and also adopt regenerative or what we call circular economy within the subsector. According to research by Egerton University, despite my irrigation scheme being more intensive in comparison to Western Kenya, the yields per acre are considerably lower. But why is this a situation? Uh, what is very clear is that um, Moya is more advanced in the marketing, market linkages, and the orientation of farmers to innovations in the value chain. And therefore, they have well-organized marketing system. They have uh, the farmers are highly linked to marketing processing. There are several meals up to 15, I think, as compared to a hero. A hero is um, not well established in terms of um, the, the Western, Western Kenya, in terms of the value chain and innovations. So, uh, but the difference is that the productivity in Western Kenya is higher. So with the intensification in eastern Kenya, where farmers don't allow the, the farm to rest, continuous irrigated, uh, irrigated system does not allow the soil to, to breathe. So uh, continuous aboxic conditions does not allow microorganisms to survive because there is no oxygen for nine months in a year. So in, western, in western, west Kenya, the farmers produce at least one, one crop plus an additional mini crop. So the rest of the time is a rest period for the farm. So nutrient content, the soil organic matter, the, the overall production system is better in Western Kenya. At the production stage, overuse of fertilizer in the fields has been a challenge. To address this, millers like Moya Rice Growers Multipurpose Cooperative Society has adopted the urea deep placement system where nitrogenous fertilizers like urea are applied in a more efficient way. On the other hand, input providers like Mago Enterprises in Western Kenya can already see great uptake of the pelleted urea by the farmers. The nitrogenous fertilizer uh, found in the market is in granule form. And that granule forms, or those granules, are the ones which are applied by the farmer through broadcasting. So we have realized the cost of applying and the amount of fertilizer being applied is too high. Now through the 4R program, uh, they have financed us to compact those granules into pellets, thereby reducing the amount of fertilizer being applied into the field. Of course, also reducing the cost. So when you go to apply into the chamber, we don't broadcast. What we shall do, we are going to apply them deeper into the soil through that method of urea deep placement. This fertilizer is slow release. And most of the demos that we have done is just a one-off application. After 21 days, within 21 days, a farmer applies this and it's just enough for that farmer, for the whole production process. And with that, in the delivery that we have, we have increased farmer production to, to, to 30%. And now, the adoption is really coming up. I can proudly say I've already sold up to around 800 bags of this. And if you visit some of our farmers in Bunyala, in West Kano, and, uh, and Ahero, we'll be able to find that now they understand the use of the uh, pelleted urea as a way of increasing rice production. In addition to improved fertilizer application, the project is also intensifying adoption of crop rotation, where farmers are planting leguminous crops like green grams after the rice growing season is over. This ensures that the soils get to rest and are enriched with nitrogen from the leguminous crops, which is essential in amending soils and improving the yields. When we are doing the crop rotation, uh, the yield starts to grow up again. We do uh, green grams. After green grams, we do rice. When we put rice, we, when we put green grams, we can even get more money like the one I did, myself I did, I get a lot of money from the green grams. It supported me in school fees, uh, in hospital, I, even uh, in some other things. It helped me a lot. 
Beyond the rice grain, rice husks and straws are the main byproducts in rice production. The straws contain silica, which takes much longer to decompose, leaving farmers with limited options on how to utilize them. They end up either being burnt or fed to livestock, despite their low nutrition value. To address this, the R4I CSA project, in partnership with Egerton University, has piloted vermicomposting, where redworms are used to break down the straws into rich organic manure and vermi liquid, which farmers can use on their farm or even sell. The straw from rice has got a lot of silica. There is an uptake of silica in the straw and therefore they cannot easily be biodegradable. The worms play a very important role. They introduce hydrolytic enzymes into the straw. So we mix together with the organic, mat organic matter from cow dung and within a period of 60 days, all this straw now has been biodegraded from, through the mechanisms of hydrolytic enzymes. And also the, the red worms are very, very active. They feed also on this. And within a short time, if you leave them in the farm without doing farm composting, you will come back after 90 days and you still get it as hard as it is without breaking down. So that is why you see most of the rice production systems, one of the biggest problems is what to do with the straw. Rice husks, on the other hand, have been a menace to millers for a very long time. They account for the bulk of waste at the point of milling. In a period of one month, we are able to mill exactly about 8,000 kilograms. And uh, out of 8,000 kilograms, Rice us is about 800 kilograms. We had a charge, uh, particularly on the space for keeping this rice husk, because uh, 250 metric tons is much, much, much husk. And uh, we used to burn that husk initially, but due to the population growth and the scarcity of space, particularly in Moya, we don't have any space where we can take this husk and burn. But tables are turning. Rice husks are now becoming a sought-after input in production of diverse products from fabrication of stoves that use rice husks, carbonation of husks for production of organic fertilizer to rich organic material for tree nurseries. The opportunities are many. We started working on this innovation because as you, when you walk around you find a lot of waste uh, that are just dumped outside. And uh, most of we were propelled by the amount of waste that was coming out of Kisumu town. And so we were seeing the dump site, which has been a very big problem, even to the government, on how to dispose the waste. So we realized that there were a lot of waste that were being disposed there are combustible waste. And so we were thinking on a way on how we can turn this waste into um, energy. And that's why we came up with uh, this kind of stuff that then could be used to burn that waste to, 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 to energy and at the same time uh, help in management of those waste. This innovation is gradually taking shape with women adopting it as an alternative to using firewood. Koro nyaka nwadhi asemi na mar tiyo gi kendo ni nwayudo ka tich yot kech meudhwe wan go machigni ka kech ka boni ipedha michele koro wayudo yugi mar meudhwe koro wadhwa jawe ka chato biro tiyo kode ka mane ber mwaneno gi kendo ni in moya meet wawero with a team of over 10 youth who have learned how to add value to rice husks Kilimo Trust has helped them register their company, that is Moya Carbonators, and create linkages for them with Moya Rice Growers Multipurpose Cooperative, where they get the rice husk for carbonation to make biochar. It has been proven that husks and biochar are very essential in rice and other seedling development in nurseries. The East Root development and uprooting of seedlings without injuring them during transplanting. <laughs> Tunaenda tunaendea bagi sema kama 500 per week mpaka saa hii tunaendea 1000. Si naona hao wametusaidia. The biochar is ready to use for farmers as mulching material, but it doesn't end here. 
Kilimo Trust has linked Waweru with Safi Organics, an organics fertilizer manufacturer which uses the chard husks for production of organic fertilizers. Initially, actually, we were doing the whole process here. So we would do the carbonization here. But now we realized that um, it is one of the bottlenecks and definitely uh, was taking quite a lot of time and also limiting uh, our capacity. So what happened is we chose uh, to look for people uh, to work with and people we can train uh, on how to convert the rice husk into biochar. So, and uh, one of the things that happened uh, interestingly then uh, Climotrust was also in the picture. So we brought uh, people like Wawero on board. Uh, we have about six teams that are doing that for us. And the good news is the, these people are able to one uh, a good income uh, from the venture uh, which would otherwise uh, they would otherwise have moved to urban centers to look for jobs so we are reducing that uh, indirectly we say as Safi Organics we are employing about 30 youths locally. With Eastern Kenya having intensified value addition companies like Lake Basin Agritech are working towards knowledge transfer in the western region. The cost of producing rice is too high and most of that cost is actually taken by a uh, fertilizer. So this is the reason why we decided to look for which are other cheaper ways of uh, improving soil fertility in, in rice production. And uh, we also learned from uh, uh, our colleagues in, in Mwea, Safi Organics, which uh, was already in the field of uh, biochar production. So our intention uh, was to replicate the same in Western Kenya because we had seen the impact that uh, 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 biochar had in rice fields in Mwea. Already, Vincent and his team have introduced biochar to tree nursery owners given that the charred husks can be used solely on plants owing to the high nitrate and moisture retention capabilities. Abo kitambo wakati tulikuwa tulianza in nursery ilikuwa fiumu sababu machi ya tukuwa tunapata kiulaizi na ara tukipata match kwa ulaizi eh, soil hapa inakwanga haina ile rutuba ya kutosha yenye inaweza kufanya mimea ifanye nini ime nzuri so tulikuwa tunacharibu kutumika hata mambo ya hii west ya ngombe at least kama itaweza itaweza tusaidia lakini tukakuja tukapata bado inaumiza mimea so lakini wakati wenzangu walitembelea hapa wenye wanatoka kwa kambuni na wakani wakanielimisha file naisaweka hii manyua naifanye hapo ndio nilianza kutumika kidogo kidogo ijapokuwa ile wakati waliniletea nilitumika kidogo kuofia sababu siwahi tumika nikaofia itaisa choma mimea yangu but wakati niliweka na nikaona inafanya mzuri ilibidi sana mimi mwenyewe nianze kuwatafuta atiswa wakiniletea ili kutumika ili mea yangu iwe ki, ikifanya mzuri going forward as all these interventions take shape cross learning opportunities will be critical to scaling up and transforming rice farming to become more sustainable given its important role in addressing food nutrition security and improved incomes for all the value chain actors to find out more about R4 ICSA project by Kilimo Trust visit their website www.kelimotrust.org